Swole Benji here. Today I'm going to show you the fastest way to get started in Albion Online. If you follow this guide, you will be able to skip straight to tier 4 and above content and completely bypass the blue zone. I see lots of struggling newbies riding around on donkeys, using below tier 4 gear, and really generally struggling to advance. With this guide, you'll be perfectly set up with plenty of starting silver and decent gear to get you rolling ahead of the majority of new players. One thing I hate when playing new games is not knowing what I should be doing so I don't waste time. I made this guide specifically for people like myself who want to completely skip the early game and be as efficient as possible with my time. After this guide, I will follow it up with two more guides depending on the path you want to take in this game, and I highly recommend you just choose one, rather than try to do both. Either the dungeon clearing fighting path, great for PvP and getting stronger, or the gatherer path, which is amazing for making tons of money and lets you play this game at a much more casual, laid back, chill pace. Unlike other guides for this game, my guides will give you a 100% safe and no risk way to jumpstart you ahead. Every guide I see similar to this has you doing very risky and dangerous things in order to get ahead. Well, let me tell you, the risk is generally not worth the reward in both profits and time. This guide will never get you killed, never get your loot stolen, and will allow you to progress to a point where if you want to risk anything, you can very easily make up for those losses. Too many times have I killed newbies who have had their entire net worth on their character because they followed one of those other guides not fully aware of the risk. To start out, create your character however you want. Make sure you have the play tutorial button checked. If you skip the tutorial, you will be dumped into the world with no gear and no skills. The tutorial is pivotal to getting early cash. I won't tell you how to play the tutorial, that's on you to figure out. Just know if you're a Chad gamer, you can speedrun it in under 10 minutes. But if you're new to the game, you really, really should do the tutorial and try out lots of stuff. It's very rich in resources and is one of the only places in the entire game that is layered. Once you get to the part of the tutorial where it asks you to get tier 2 items, you can either craft or buy them off the market. The money you spend here is insignificant and it's much faster to just buy the items, but if you want to learn how to craft them, then feel free to spend all the time you want experimenting. Now what you want to get is the novice's mercenary shoes, mercenary hood, scholar robe, and the bow. The reason you want this setup is because cloth armor massively increases your damage, the bow is the strongest and fastest killing weapon, and allows us to unlock what we'll be using later. The helmet and boots will increase increase our kill speed once we get upgrades for those types. For the bow, I use Deadly Shot as it lowers resistance and does as much damage as the other AoE. You can trash your old gear. Don't worry about selling it. Don't eat your carrot soup. Save it. With the bow, just activate your W and E abilities as this will augment your auto attack to do crazy fast damage. Continue with the tutorial till you get to the point where it asks you to light a signal fire. Do not light the fire yet. And if you did, do not go through the gate. Once you go through the gate, you cannot go back. Once you're in town, trash everything you're not wearing except the skinning knife because you'll need that for a quest later and rough stone. Remember, at this point you should be wearing a mercenary hood, mercenary boots, scholar robe, bow, a cape, your donkey, and carrot soup. Now comes a tedious part, but don't worry, this pays off massively. See the big circle of rough stones? You're going to harvest these. They are worth on average 100 silver each. You're going to pick up as much as you can stand gathering. If there's lots of people around, you can craft a stone hammer to harvest slightly faster. I did this during prime time with a lot of newbies also harvesting and it took me 15 minutes to get to 100% weight. 
but you don't want to stop at 100%. I generally can't stand going into the red or 160%. This game rounds its weight up, but if you stop at 867 rough stone, you'll be in the orange zone at 160%. All in all, from the start of the tutorial to getting to 160% weight in rough stone took me 50 minutes. Don't worry, as this stone will sell for a small starting fortune. Now, make your way back through the snowy zone. If you use your sprint ability from your boots, you can traverse the zone faster. Once you get to the boat, you want to choose Step Cross as your starting point. You don't technically have to do it, but I recommend it as it's the most dead zone and the stone sells amazingly well in Bridgewatch. Once you get to step cross, put all that stone into the big chest in the middle. Don't worry, no one else can touch your stuff. Now go to the topmost quest giver on the map and accept his quest. Turn it in and get a focus potion and accept the next part. Drink this focus potion by left clicking the potion, then clicking use on the box that pops up in the middle of your screen. Exit town from the northeast part and ride around till you find an impala. No, not the car. These little deer creatures. Kill it, then left click it to skin it. Now go back into step cross by going southwest. Once in town, click on any of the workbenches highlighted on the map. Press in to see your map. Now, your quest should tell you to use focus to craft any tier 2 item. Go to the southmost bench to the tanner. Click the tanner, click stiff leather, then at the bottom middle click the check mark next to focus. Then adjust your quantity slider to 1, then click craft. Go turn in your quest, but do not drink this focus potion. The very first time you upgrade to premium, you will be given max focus, so it would be wasted right now. Trash the leather in your inventory and the skinning knife. Bank the other items for now. On the very left side of town is another quest giver. Talk to him, accept, then stand near him for 4 seconds. Once you complete the quest, he will give you 1 gold. Click the coin button at the top right of your user interface. Then at the bottom, you'll see a sell gold for silver box. Type 1 into the gold amount, then click sell. Finally, pick up the quest in the bottom middle of the map. For this one, click combat training, then click a dangerous place. Leave at the top right exit, and then once you're in fractured ground, Ride to the question mark on the map. Turn in and accept the next quest. Then ride east to the yellow and green cave icon on the map. Once you're there, just kill mobs. You can even zone into the dungeon and kill the mobs inside. Make sure to loot the silver they drop as it's part of the quest. Your boot sprint ability makes your cooldown shorter. As you kill the mobs, once your journeyman armor and weapons hit 20%, use your learning points to complete them. The quest giver will direct you to go southeast for the next part. The quest giver there will tell you to kill 10 mobs. Once you pick up the quest, go to any of the yellow green cave icons and complete the quest. Remember, your attacks are a rapid fire area of effect, so don't be afraid to group 6 mobs up and blow them all up at once. Once you're done, turn in the quest. This is the final quest of the game. Yes, you heard me. This isn't a game that has quests. It's up to you to play the game how you want. The item you get is the Adept's Royal Sigil, which is used to craft specific armors. This sells for quite a lot and isn't worth keeping because if you choose to craft with it, you'll be crafting at a loss. I do want to note that the quest givers will sometimes send you to different zones. Just follow where they send you. It's to split up the players in the zone. Return back to Step Cross and gather all your items from the chest. You'll never be returning back here. Exit through the northeast into Fractured Ground, then walk to the northeast exit to get to Bridge Watch. Remember, Run speed on boots is faster than your mount right now, so use it. Or if you're lazy, bind a key to auto run and just use your donkey. Once you're in town, you're going to be overwhelmed with icons on the map. What you're looking for is in the very center, there's a green circle with a yellow hammer. That's the auction house. Ride through the entryway and make your way over to the big blob of character names. From there, click the center to open the auction house. Click the second tab labeled Sell, and click the Sell button next to your rough stone. Now, it's very important you don't click the Sell button here. Instead, click the Sell Order button, then click the Minus button next to the price one time. This will undercut the lowest listed prices. Remember that one gold you sold earlier? This will pay for the Sell Order. Click Create, and as soon as the stone sells, it'll be automatically deposited. You aren't selling the entire stack like you would in World of Warcraft. Buyers can choose to buy as much or as little as they want. For the Royal Sigil, check the 
sell versus the sell order prices. If there isn't thousands of silver difference, go ahead and sell it immediately for no fee. Depending on the economy and the time of day, you might need to adjust your rough stone price. To do that, click the very last tab labeled My Orders and click Edit next to your rough stone. Make sure to always undercut everyone to get the quick sales. This will cost a setup fee each time, but if you aren't the lowest priced person, you won't be able to sell quickly. With the money from the Royal Sigil, you'll be able to adjust your sell order to keep it the cheapest while you do this next step. I'm going to recommend a great nature staff build for you to follow, as this will let you do gathering, dungeons, the daily dungeon, and even have instant queues for arena, which are another source of money very easily and effortlessly. First off, click the top buy tab and type nature staff into the search bar. It'll automatically list the cheapest items first. Buy a journeyman's nature Nature staff. During the time of this writing, this guide, I managed to sell all of my stone with three undercuts, putting me over 100,000 silver. And doing this casually took me about 1 hour and 30 minutes. Now, click the little circle arrow icons to default all the searches back to normal. Click the category drop down box. Make sure you're in the buy tab. Hover your mouse over armor and click leather helmet. Click the tier drop down box and click tier 3. Buy whatever is cheapest. Click leather shoes and buy the cheapest again. Change the category to cloth armor and buy the cheapest there as well. Now click the circle arrows to reset everything again and type Tome of Inn, then buy the cheapest one. These are kind of a pricey item, but it's worth it. Now put on all of your new items and make sure they are equipped. Click the Tome of Insight and then click Use. This will give everything you're wearing 10,000 experience. Now, use your learning points on Nature Staff Fighter, Leather Shoes Fighter, Leather Hood Fighter, and Cloth Robe Fighter. Congrats! You're now Tier 4 in under 2 hours. Most newbies don't reach this point for several days. Right click the item you have equipped, except your donkey and cape. Make sure the search bar and tabs at the top are reset back to default by pressing those circle arrows. And put in sell orders for all of the tier 3 green gear you just bought. Due to the differences, I only did a sell order on the staff and the soup and just flat sold the other items. We're almost done. Now, go back to the buy tab and search for great nature. Next to the tier box is a box that says all. Click that and then click one. This will show enchanted items. This shows tier 4.1 great nature staffs. Buy the cheapest that's listed. Now search for cleric robe and buy a 4.1 robe. Search for hunter shoe and buy a 4.1. Then search for hunter hood and again buy a 4.1. Put all of your items on and use the following skills and passives. Hunter hood with retaliate and balanced mind. Cleric robe with everlasting spirit and aggression. Hunter shoes with refreshing sprint and and balanced mind, great nature staff with thorns, revitalize, living armor, and adrenaline driven charity. Now that you're all geared up and already a full week ahead of other newbies, time to do a few more dailies and earn more money. First off, ride southeast from the auction house to the bank and deposit your 3 day premium and focus potion. Don't use those right now. You can trash or sell the tier 2 items. They're so cheap that they're not worth bothering with. So now, if you got to the 160% weight with rough stones, with everything bought, you should be sitting on around 50,000 silver right now. From the bank, exit through the northwest stairs back into town. From there, go southeast to the big blue portal. Click the portal, then click Adept's Individual Expeditions, and click Start. This is a tier 4 solo instanced daily dungeon that gives you a royal sigil. The build and gear I have given you will make this a breeze. All you have to do is press Q to give yourself 5 extra strong area of effect auto attack explosions and left click mobs. If you're brand new, go for a full clear. If you're not, speed through it and only kill the mobs the quest tells you to kill. If you want to target yourself, hold alt and press the key. Your W ability is a channeled heal and mana regeneration. Your E ability puts a shield on you that heals you when you take damage. Your R will give you invulnerability and a damage boost if you take damage within 1 second 
second of it being activated. And your D gives you defenses and a reflect shield to dish out damage back to mobs. Your run ability also shortens all of your cooldowns. I can clear this dungeon in about 4 minutes, but if you full clear it, it'll take longer. Once you learn the game, the drops and experience isn't worth full clearing for. Once you get to the end and beat the boss, you'll receive some bonus silver and another royal sigil. Go sell it. At this point, I want to mention that all the gear you've bought can be resold if you don't like it or if you want to try something else. You're never truly out of money that you spent because of items aren't soul bound in this game. After doing the daily expedition blue portal, I'm up to about 90,000 silver now. The reason I had you go Great Nature Staff is it trivializes that daily, makes farming easy, and dungeons as well, and gives you an instant arena queue. At this point, the last dailies you can do are your daily bonus, which gives you a very weak tome, or arena. I highly advise you do arena, and to queue as a healer. I know what you're thinking, but swole Benji, I just started playing, I'll get destroyed. No, arena scales down everyone's gear. As a healer, you get instant queues, and most arena arenas are one-sided anyway, and even if you were not to exactly heal anyone and just DPS instead, which is what I do unless my team is good, you'll win anyway. If you really don't want to ever do arena, you're going to lose out on a massive amount of experience and around 120,000 silver a day, but I'll go over both routes. For Arena, click the scroll parchment looking icon that is to the left of the mailman letter icon. Click Arena, then click Solo Queue. It should have a green hand icon selected meaning you're queuing as a healer. Healers get extra rewards and no wait time. A pop-up will say your arena match is ready. To play, just press Q and click on people to kill them and use your armor and helmet abilities if they attack you. If you want to heal, press W or E on an ally, or open your inventory and change your Q ability to the heal. You can do this three times a day for big rewards. Arena is mostly about capturing the points anyway, and in a 1v1 situation, you are one of the hardest builds to kill. Do note, people will talk shit about what gear you're wearing, ignore them. Arena matches take about 10 minutes and all you need is 3 wins. If you queue as a DPS, the wait time can be as long as 20 minutes. To win faster, just run to the top points and try to capture them. Don't worry about the middle so much till you've got more experience with the game. At worst, it's taken me about 2 hours to get 3 wins, and if you're really, really, if you really hate Arena, then just doing the 2 wins puts you in, into the tier 5 reaver when you are going to use the tomes which lets you do yellow dungeons dungeons safely, the highest possible solo safe dungeon. Once you're done with arena, use the money bags you've won and sell the arena sigils. This put me at a whopping 179,000 silver. I also have 152,000 experience from tomes I can use on whatever I want, and it's only been the first 2 or 3 hours of the game. If you choose not to do the arena, you will need to go to tier 4 blue zones nearby and run around on your donkey until you find green portals. These are solo dungeons. You will need to clear them out until you unlock Expert Reaver. Then you can move on to Tier 5 dungeons. It's very random, but you probably won't make as much money as you would doing your daily arena. Now that all your dailies are done, all you have to do each day is the one portal expedition and the arena matches. If this is your first character, I highly recommend that you make two more characters and repeat this guide. If you do, each day you can do the 4 minute expedition portal and make a total of 90,000 silver. And if you do arena on each character, that's 360,000 silver for a total of 450,000 per day, which is a crap load if you just started the game. Another reason to do this is because much later on, you'll want your three characters all rolling with premium, and doing the dailies will also net them 50,000 challenge points, which unlocks the monthly mounts worth millions, as well as tons of other cool rewards. So having these characters already made, geared, and at the ready will highly benefit you later. At this point, you should have over 150,000 silver if you've done everything right so far. It's time to form a guild. Why do you ask? Everything you do earns you something called challenge points. Challenge points turn into siphoned energy. If you earn 100,000 challenge points, which only takes a handful of tier 5 dungeons, your guild will earn 300 siphoned energy, which sells on the market for over 900,000 silver. And then you can just disband and remake the guild. 
and repeat for easy money. Much later on, you'll use your own guild for guild islands to make even more money, but that'll be for the gatherer video. So what you need to do now after you've done arena or after you've gotten your dungeon grind done and are over 100,000 silver is press G, then click create guild, give it a name, then pay the fee to create. Now, when you gather materials or kill mobs, you will earn points. If you open the parchment scroll icon next to the mailman letter icon and click guild challenge, you can see how many points until your guild levels up. Each time it levels, you get 300 siphoned energy which sells for a massive amount. Now, once you've done that two more times, log into your main and it's time to choose what you're going to be doing for the next 30 days. Do you want to be a dungeon chad? who strengthens his combat ability so that he can go gank and murder people for loot while getting random assortments of loot from the dungeons? Or do you want to be a gatherer, which turns into a refiner, which ultimately turns into using laborers to gather for you and then crafting a product which in turn will feed more laborers who will give you more materials for crafting said items. I will cover each of these in a separate video. If you try to do both at the same time, you will be too spread out on your learning points and you will progress very slowly. Just note that both lead to riches and power. Yes, even gatherers, once they reach critical mass, can buy their way into combat skills, and expert high spec super geared gankers can also buy their way into laborers. If you manage to play all day, you can have a gatherer main and a ganker main, which really works well, but I recommend just focusing on one main and letting your alts just be there to farm you dailies until they can eventually be used for focus and farmland. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you followed these instructions, you will be fully geared and ready to destroy tier 5 solo dungeons, have plenty of money, a decent setup of gear, and you're already weeks ahead of other newbies. If you have any questions, come join the Discord, where I'll be glad to help or answer any questions you may have. If you're watching when this video is older, then check out the dungeon pvp -er or the gathering routes for follow-ups to this video. If you found this video very helpful, there's a link where you can drop a donation and it'll get your name up here on this fancy end screen. As always, be a bro and stay swole.